Today's lesson is on graphing rational functions. The word rational means that it will be expressed as a fraction. And when you look at the function that I had given you, you can easily factor the numerator and factor the denominator. So that is the first thing I want you to do. Using dots in the numerator, it is x plus 5 times x minus 5. And using dots in the denominator, you end up with x plus 3 and x minus 3. So when you look at this, the factored version does not cancel out any factors, which means this version in black is exactly the same as the version in blue. Now, when you were asked to find x-intercepts for a problem, all you have to do is substitute in zero for f of x, which means f of x is going to be zero, and I'll use the version in black, x squared minus 25 over x squared minus 9. So to find the x-intercepts, you change f of x into zero, and then you cross multiply to solve. So x minus 9 times zero is still zero, and one times x squared minus 25 is still x squared minus 25. You're gonna factor the right-hand side because it's a quadratic, and that's how you solve quadratics, into x plus five times x minus five. You proceed to set each one of those factors equal to zero. So x plus five equals zero, and x minus five equals zero. And when you solve each one, you get two answers. One answer is negative five, and the other answer is positive five. But when the question is asking for x-intercepts, I want you to write them down as points. When the x value is negative five, the y value was zero. And when the x value is five, the y value was zero. So you actually have two x-intercepts. One is at negative five, zero, and the other one is at five, zero. And now we proceed to the next section. The next section is asking for the y-intercept. Now, because it's a function, there can only be one y-intercept. Otherwise, it would not be a function. It would fail the vertical line test. But in order for you to find the y-intercept, all you have to do is evaluate the function at zero. That's all you have to do. So I'm still going to look at the function written in black, and I'm going to plug in a zero for all the x's that appear in the numerator, and I'm going to plug in a zero for all the x's that appear in the denominator. But that's going to give me negative 25 over negative 9, which even though it doesn't go unevenly, you should know that a negative divided by a negative is a positive. If I ask for a y-intercept, you have to write your answer as a point. The x value is 0, but the y value came out to be 25 over 9, which is kind of close to the number 3, all right, because 27 divided by 9 is 3. Now, once you are done with those two, the next thing that I had asked of you is, is there a vertical asymptote? So when you're going for vertical asymptotes, you're allowed to abbreviate it with capital V, capital A for vertical asymptotes. All you have to do is set the denominator equal to zero. That's all you have to do. When you solve, because it's a quadratic, you're gonna factor using dots x plus three times x minus three equals zero. You set each one of your factors equal to zero, and you're gonna end up with two answers. But a vertical asymptote is a line. And the way you write down lines is different than the way that you write down points. So the x-intercepts are points, the y-intercept is a point, but anytime you want to express a line, you leave the equal sign in the answer. Those are my two vertical asymptotes. Now the next part that I had given you was find the horizontal asymptote. And there are rules for finding the horizontal asymptotes. So you're allowed to abbreviate it with HA. And I'll only go over the rule that applies to the problem that we are doing right now. 
When you look at the problem written in black, the degree of the numerator is two because the highest exponent is two. And the degree of the denominator is also two because the highest exponent is two. I need you to write down that the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. You're gonna write down your answer next, but I need to have you write down that sentence first. And the answer to the question for the horizontal asymptote is y equals, and it's your job to take the ratio of the leading coefficients. So the leading coefficient in the numerator is one, and the leading coefficient in the denominator is one. So you're looking at y equals one over one. Of course we know that that is the same as y equals one. And asymptotes are straight lines, so therefore what you have to do is you have to make sure that you have the equal sign still in the problem. All right, the next thing says, um, does the function intersect the horizontal asymptote or the slant asymptote? So, I'm just gonna write down intersecting horizontal asymptote, and I'm just gonna put a question mark next to it because that's what you're trying to figure out. Well, the way you do that is you take the actual rational expression, which is written right over here, and you write it down, x squared minus 25, all divided by x squared minus nine, and you set it equal to the horizontal asymptote, which is the number one. When you cross multiply in this problem, one times x squared minus 25 is x squared minus 25. And x squared minus nine times one is still x squared minus nine. If you wanna solve, you wanna subtract x squared from both sides. But when you subtract x squared from the left and you also subtract x squared from the right, you will notice that you get a statement that says negative 25 is equal to negative nine. And that statement is a false statement. So I'm obviously gonna write a little slash through it because it's not equal. If you get a false statement, the answer is no. So you have to show all the work in red, but then you have to actually answer the question once you are done. Once you are finished with that, I am asking you to figure out what type of symmetry this shape has. Now, because of lack of board space, I'm gonna erase basically everything I have, but I gotta remember what it is that I wrote down because I won't remember. So, when you look at the worksheet that is given to you, the function is on top, and I first ask, what are the coordinates of the holes? There are no holes. I haven't told you why, but I'm just stating it now that there's no holes and you can write that down in that first cell. Then it asks for the x-intercepts, which I figured out that they are negative five, zero, but also five, zero. Your next cell asks for the y-intercepts, but we figured that out to be zero and 25 ninths, which is close to the number three but not exactly. And then it asks for the vertical asymptotes, but we did that. The vertical asymptotes are x equals negative three and x equals positive three. I asked for the horizontal asymptote, but we figured that out to be y is equal to one. And then we figured out that your graph of this function in black never touches the horizontal asymptote. So I'm gonna write down doesn't intersect, just so I remember. Okay, so I can erase the board because I have all the important information on the top right of this whiteboard. I'll leave the original function. I'll even leave the factored version in blue next to it but everything else besides the answers, I will get rid of. 
Now the next part of this question is actually asking for Oh, maybe I should have said the cell that says slant asymptote, there is none. Haven't told you why, so maybe I'll write that down. No slant asymptote. I can't fit the whole word. And when it says, does it intersect the horizontal or the slant? Well, we said it doesn't intersect the horizontal, but if there's no slant, it can't intersect it. So we're up to the next part that says, what type of symmetry does the function have? So I'm just going to write down the word symmetry. And I'll put a question mark next to it because that's what you have to figure out. Now, there's only two types of symmetry that I check for. There's many types of symmetry. I check for even symmetry and I check for odd symmetry but you use the same exact method to check for both. You look at the equation written in black and it's your job to fill in a negative X for all the X's that show up in the problem. So I'm just copying down the problem in black, but every time I see an X, I'm filling in a negative X in its position. Once you are finished with that, what you need to do is just clean up the right hand side. So I have f of negative x is equal to, when you square a negative, it becomes a positive. Same in the denominator, when you square a negative, it becomes a positive. Once you are done cleaning it up, it is your job to compare the answer you got with the original answer written in black. You will notice that they are exactly the same, which leads me to conclude that f of negative x is exactly the same as the original f of x. This is your conclusion. When that is your conclusion, your graph has even symmetry. I'll explain what that means, but if they match, your graph has even symmetry. Even symmetry means that it is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. It means you can fold it over the y-axis and it folds right on top of itself. It's kind of like thinking of a butterfly. What's on the left side has a mirror image on the right side. And that's basically what it is. So even symmetry, mathematically, we write down it is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And that just means you can fold it over the y-axis and it folds on top of itself nicely. All right, so the next thing is um, sketch it. So I have all the information that I need and then finally they'll ask for the domain and the range. So for my sketch, you are drawing a y-axis and an x-axis. That's the first thing that you're going to do. And with this, you're going to proceed to put in the holes in the graph, which are none, the x-intercepts, which are five zero, and it's also negative five zero. the y-intercept, which is almost the number three, the vertical asymptotes, one of which is x equals negative three, The other one is x equals positive 3. And the horizontal asymptote, y is equal to 1. Oh, 
Okay, and now I'm gonna be ready to sketch. Now, when you draw a sketch, basically, your eyes have to be focused on specific intervals. The intervals that you need to be focused on are the interval that goes from negative infinity to negative five. I'm gonna put it here, negative infinity to negative five. The next interval that you have to be focused on is negative five to negative three, negative five to negative three. The next interval will be from negative three to positive three. So negative three to positive three. The next interval will be from three to five. That's three to five. And the last one will be five to infinity. So how do I know which intervals I should be looking at? The intervals are divided up by the vertical asymptotes and the zeros. Since there's one zero here, you have to check on the left-hand side, which is here, and the right-hand side, which is here. But you also have to check on the left and the right of vertical asymptotes. So that's why you need from negative three to positive three, because it's in between the two vertical asymptotes, then in between a vertical asymptote and a zero, and then a zero and beyond. So it's the vertical asymptotes and the zeros that determine where you're going to do testing. Okay, so those are not points, those are intervals. So what do I do? You don't really do any massive work. You pick any number you would like in between here, and I'm gonna pick negative 10. That's what I'm picking. I go back to my original, filling in that's 100 minus 25. You don't even care what the answer is, you just know that it's positive. And 100 minus nine is also positive. And a positive divided by a positive is positive. When you get positive, that means you are above the x-axis. That's basically all it means, you're above the x-axis. I am above the x-axis. I'm good. Then, picking a number between these two, you might want to pick negative 4. You don't have to write it down, but when you fill in negative 4 here, you get 16 minus 25, which is definitely negative, and you get 16 minus 9, which is definitely positive. But a negative divided by a positive is a negative, and negative means you're below the x-axis. So now i got to go below. So I already know what this side looks like. It looks like this. And remember, they gravitate towards those dotted lines. They never touch them, they just gravitate towards them. Now pick a number between negative three and three, but the easiest one to pick is zero. When you fill a zero in for the top, it's negative 25. And when you fill the zero into the bottom, it's negative nine. So you got a negative on the top, you got a negative on the bottom, but your division gives you a positive. That positive means you're above the x-axis. So if you're gonna be above the x-axis always, you gotta draw something that kinda of looks like a parabola, but it's going up because you're always gonna be above the x-axis. You can't go down because otherwise it'll end up going below the x-axis. And then I wanna pick a number in the interval from three to five, and I'm gonna pick four. But if you fill in a four here, 16 minus 25 is a negative number. And 16 minus nine is a positive number. And a negative divided by a positive is a negative, which just means you're below the x-axis in the interval from three to five. So three to five is here and I'm below the x-axis. And then finally, from five to infinity, you could pick 10. 100 minus 25 is positive, 100 minus nine is positive. So the numerator is positive, the denominator is positive, and when you divide two positive numbers, you get positive, which just means you're above the x-axis, but not skyrocketing up, because you have to gravitate towards those green dotted lines. And by the way, that shape, you could fold it over the y-axis and it folds right on top of itself nicely. And that is how you do the first question.